a film uh, now screening in Australian cinemas and BAFTA nominated for Best Foreign Language Film is the film Corsage. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the writer-director of Corsage, Marie Kreutzer. Marie, welcome to Movie Metropolis. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> Wonderful to talk to you. And I'm so intrigued by this film and uh, what it tells us about Empress Elizabeth of Austria. How did it come about that you uh, made this film? Uh, it was actually the idea, uh, Vicky Krebs' idea, the actress. Um, we made a film together before and wanted to work together again. And at some point she said, why don't we make a film about Sissi? And I... I didn't take it very seriously because growing up in Austria, Sissy is everywhere. She's on half of the souvenirs. If it's not Mozart, it's always her. So it was not a person I was personally interested in, or I, I didn't. I didn't really. It's it. It was too much of a cliche to me at that time. But somehow the idea stayed with me. And at some point, I started reading about her and went to the museums, which are all very, very close to my home. The, the Hofburg where she lived in most of the time is really like a 10 minute walk from my apartment. So it was really obvious to go see all these places. And I was just open um, to look into the material and see if, if something would resonate with me. And then focusing on her in her 30s and 40s, because that was the time I didn't know much about. Um, and and seeing that at that time in her life, she became more and more what I would call rebellious against her role and the expectations of um, of the court, but also of, of society. That was something I could really relate to and um, that we haven't seen about her yet, I think. And that's what I've seen. No, I understand. And, and that's what I found so mm -hmm. interesting about your film, because it, it it takes historical facts, but it, you also play around with that and give a contemporary feel to the film, including music and and uh, buildings that are used that are uh, contemporary buildings. Tell me about your process in the way you mm -hmm. filmed this story. Um, well, I can. I, what I can say is that when you, um, it was the first time I did so much research about one character, about one historical figure, and when you read different biographies written in different times and by different people, uh, you you will come to realize that they are all interpretations of facts. So it's just not that it's not one story. It's what you make of it. Um, and that's why I felt quite free to, on one hand, to make my own story, write my own story based on some facts, but not only, um, but also to question um, history a little bit, you know, when you, when you, when you really, when you really see that the bare fact that I have one book about her that a historian uh, suggested to me to buy, and she said it's a good book because it's only the facts, only the dates and the facts, only the things we know about her. And it's like this. And when you buy a biography, it's like this. So, of course, you have to make it into a story to make it digestible and interesting for an audience. And that's why I thought this whole film is also about questioning history and what we think we know about a certain period, which also very often has to do with films because we've seen it in films. That's why we accept um, that's why we expect to to know what it looked like in the 19th century, for example. So I started to play with that based on that realization that it's always only what we make of it. And because we were all not there, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, at some point it also became a dynamic in, in the crew and uh, with my artistic collaborators from production design, lightning and camera from um, costume design that we were more and more playing with um, because they came all very well prepared and, and knew exactly what would have been correct for that time. But we started playing around with what we like better, um, what, what fits um, the idea of the film, of the look of the film and the feel of the film better. And that included modern music, which was already in the script really. It's, it was really the first modern part that was in the film uh and um i i coming from there i mean the idea was to include the music the modern the contemporary music in a way that it would feel 
a little bit as if it could or could could have existed already, like the audience uh, questioning um, themselves, like, is this an old song? Is it is it actually so much older than I thought? That was the idea to to have interpretations uh, with other instruments that would allow to to maybe second guess your thoughts about a certain song, and that's like the beginning from where we started playing with um, also visual elements that would not certainly fit into um, um, the period. And it was not so much about making the film more modern. It was more about questioning what we think we know. Well, congratulations on that, because I was so impressed, because this is not a standard uh, biography by any means, and that's what I really enjoyed about it. And Vicky Creeps is just superb uh, in the title yes. role of Sissy, if you like. Um, you, as you said, you've worked with her before. She is such a, a strong actress. Absolutely. And it was it was clear for me that we would work together again, and it... Between the two films we made together, she really became world famous and and did the did the film with Daniel Day Lewis, for example, and became like had a different career suddenly. But she has not changed a bit as a person and as an actress. She's a very open and and very relaxed person and actress in many ways who who doesn't observe herself who does who is not vain at all who is very open and trustful to the director and the view of the camera and very playful also so there was also a lot of improvisation on set not really I mean all the dialogues are basically what the dialogues which were written in the script so they didn't really change the, the lyrics or the what they were saying but mm. how I, I I tried to give the actors always to give the actors a lot of freedom to uh, also come up with something I might not expect and um, that's what what and, and like you know I, I don't want to fit them in my idea of yeah you know what I thought about when writing it so I enjoy the creative process with all the other artistic collaborators as well but as especially with the actors to to what, what they bring what they bring into the film and Doing that with her is is um, very joyful and intense because she's really open to that and she's totally unpredictable. And I never really know what's what's happening when the camera is rolling. And I love that. That makes my work very, yeah, exciting. <laughs> never <laughs> a dull moment. <laughs> never a dull moment. I like that. That's, that sounds great. <laughs> now, I'm very familiar with the three sissy films from the 50s, the uh, Ernst Marischka oh, really? you are, films. Yeah. Yes, yes. And Romy mm -hmm. Schneider, of course, playing uh, Sissy, mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, Empress uh, Elizabeth. But uh, that is such, such a glossy uh, series of films, which is very much grounded in um, that traditional storytelling, which is also why I found Corsage so interesting and a break from the usual historical telling of a story. Well, I think that um, the Marischka films are a very good example for what I mean when I, when I say history is always written again by the time, you know, you, 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 um, interpret it or you um, talk about it and the the time when the Marischka films was were made it was a post-war uh, Europe and people I'm I'm sure just wanted to see something beautiful and mm. that's what he did and he also I mean I think that it's not only the films who made Romy Schneider a big star but it's also Romy Schneider who made Sissy a big star because mm. when she was um a, a, her life in her lifetime, she was not really so popular. You know, people were observing her all the time. She was interesting because she was beautiful and she was doing things differently and not the way they expected an empress to be. But I think that people didn't like her so much. I read a lot of old press about her, and it's you can you could really compare it to what the press does to Meghan Markle these days, for example, like judging whatever step she takes. Um, and that's very that, that that's absolutely comparable. Um, so I think that it was really the Marischka films who made Sissy an icon and made her popular and made all the tourists come to Vienna and want to see the castles and everything. So we we will we have to thank Ernst Marischka for that, of course. And 
if these films didn't exist, we wouldn't have made this film because it was really, Vicky Krieps saw these films as a young girl and was just intrigued by them and drawn to them and um, read a biography about Sissy when she was 15 or something. And she lived in Luxembourg. So it was not like, like we in Austria who all know who she is. So these films really brought her uh, brought Elizabeth to Vicky and then Vicky brought her to me. So, <laughs> yeah. How, how interesting to hear that. That is really, really so good. Um, I, I like the title corsage because, of course, a corsage is a, a garment that constricts a woman's mm. movement, etc. in that uh, 19th century period. And, of course, she is constricted in a number of different other ways, of course. The metaphor is very strong. And I can see that uh, uh, as she, as you progress in the film and as she rebels against, I suppose, being treated in a particular way. Yes, that's that's what why I also I mean, she was so famous for her for her very small waist and also the fact that she really had herself measured every day and and the numbers were always written down and always compared these numbers and if it was the number was slightly higher she would hate it. So that that's that's really accurate. That's that's something we know about her and um I just thought it's a very good image for um also building her own cage within the cage you know and um at the same time i i always think that i mean it's not my interpretation it it's it's true that women who do something like that to their body and also who starve themselves like she also did um don't only do it for being slim or something it was not even um um, a beauty uh, thing at that, that time to be extra slim, um, but because of the control it gives them. So I think this was the one thing that she could control. Um, and that's why it was interesting to me because it's um, the corset is is a has two sides to it, you know, it's it's something she's doing to herself and also some something she which is in her power. That's why um, I, I thought it's a very strong image and also a good, uh, therefore a good title. <laughs> it certainly is. It works really well for me. You must have been uh, thrilled at the way uh, people have responded to your film, including the BAFTA nomination, and uh, you've received so much other acclaim um, around the world for this film. I suppose that's that's great for someone like yourself who has made a, a number of films and you're looking to obviously continue making these uh, sorts of uh, challenging films, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I learned very early that it's not good to, it, in my job, it's not, it's not good to focus on, on um, attention or, or, or awards so much because it's not in your hands, you know, um, I try to focus on what's in my hands, my work and who I work with and what I work on. And I really try to focus on that. But of course, when you are traveling with the film and which I did almost half a year uh, last year. Then, then you and you're always presenting that one film, and you you get kind of used to all the attention and and also love for the film. And this is really beautiful. But it's at this moment, it's also like I I I was always so it it was always so important for me to stay close to myself and not like measure myself um on things like that like like success or or um uh acknowledgements um so i always try to like take a step back and we're just going to the baftas for the fun you know <laughs> <laughs> so okay. it's just like i'm I, i'm used to being nominated a lot and not winning so <laughs> you have to learn that well, <laughs> it'll happen. It'll happen. But uh, eventually, and I think you know the real the real competition in my job is so much earlier when you are working on something and you're getting you're trying to get the money and you're trying to get the film made. That's really a very hard process, and it's a fight every single time again. 
And then for me, it's somehow absurd that all these films who have already made a long way and who have been really successful and loved around the world then have to compete for anything. I mean, that's just absurd. We should, we should just celebrate together. <laughs> <laughs> that people still go see movies. That's also something I think is so beautiful that people still do that. I mean, they wouldn't have to, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, but very fair comment. I, I like the way you, you described that. And I really loved your film Ground Beneath My Feet as a good example. Oh, thank uh, you. Yes, that was a, a tough film dealing with, uh, uh, if I remember, sister's relationship and mental illness and, yes. and all yes. that. It's, it's a really superb film. So I'm intrigued. What are you planning next? To be honest, I don't really know because... While I was working on Corsage, I was already I was also working on a TV film. I started before, and then due to COVID, everything got you know all the dates got mixed up, and it got a little complicated. And so I had really parallel projects, and I couldn't write something new or come up with something new. So I'm really there. There's really a blank page now. I mean, I have, of course, I always have ideas, and um, I get I get scripts sent also, but I'm mostly interested also in writing my own scripts and so there's there's different options now and it's really hard to decide what because I've always decided um with my intuition and with, with I which what I feel drawn to and that's much more important than any career strategy strategy to me but it's after success like this, it's like really hard to make that decision and and not care for what people might say, you know. Which is very important to not care what people might say. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I, I just wanted to mention a, a few years ago, I was in uh, Vienna um, uh, and and I'm in, I've been in Germany many times for the Munich Film Festival. And so anyway, uh, and I visited the Austrian Film Commission. It's, it's so interesting. Oh, yeah. When I talk to them about how they decide what films to fund, because, of course, not as many films are produced in Austria compared to say Germany mm. yes yeah that's absolutely true it's not like we have the huge funding budgets um, but still it's a very strong film country Austria especially when it comes to festival and international acclaim um, unfortunately not so much in our own cinemas Austrian the, the Austrian audience in general is not so interested in Austrian films but oh. <laughs> <laughs> they are they are very successful out there in the world, and we can, we could, can really be proud of that. It's a very, uh, I think it's very unique for a small country like this. Absolutely yeah. endorse that. Look, Marie, congratulations on Corsage, which is now Thank in you. Australian cinemas, and we've been speaking to Marie Kreutzer, the writer director of Corsage. Thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you again for having me. <laughs> Have a good day. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>